it made me feel just so disgusting for something like that to happen when no one's around is like really gross but for it to happen with everybody watching and you know the intent of this person it's like a whole nother level of like eerie and disgusting everybody go everybody go Okay, my camera is way too low. What's up, boo? Every time I see you, you're so muggy. Is it a muggy situation? Thank you. Know you. What? You're always just so beautiful. I mean, Thank you, so babe. Pretty. You're always no. serving looks yourself. Mm. I miss you. We had a lot of fun at your uh, your poolside barbecue. Oh my God, it was so amazing meeting you and spending time with you. I was like, she is gorgeous. She is gorgeous. Thanks, babes. But everyone there was gorgeous. I think that's all you surround yourself with. I think that's just your MO. Why, thank you, thank you, thank you, <laughs> thank you, thank you. How was it spending time with me? Um, it was fabulous. You had just as much energy as I thought. You know, <laughs> people on, on the internet are like so interesting and amazing and a little bit mm -hmm. of a dud. You were not that. You exceeded my expectations, and you were so friendly. I thought that maybe it was going to be possibly a little bit like I'm Oliver Twix type vibe, but it was none of that. It was like you were just like the homie, just like. Oh, well, thank okay. you. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank you again for coming to spend time with me. And again, thank you for doing this part two with me. Part two, because we were ghetto on part one. Well, I was, and my phone died, so I got my charger connected as we speak. Okay. <laughs> and you know that when you went and did that other um ANTM like interview with the other YouTuber, I can't think of her name. Pretty Justin girl. Stacy. Uh-huh. All the girls was like, ah, 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 girl ah, over ah. there and do an interview <laughs> with her. Did she finish her interview with all of her? Ah ah. And I was like, y'all calm down. This is not that serious. It was calm down. Tilt. She doesn't I really like her. She does mm -hmm. she had a, a whole list of amazing questions and it was nothing mm -hmm. like your interview she has like her own thing and mm -hmm. i i just saw that she did a reaction video to the infamous um africa bertini episode and i messaged her and i was like well if you want to hear my two cents as opposed to you know she has like i think maybe two million subscribers subscribers mm -hmm. and i thought yeah, maybe really i can there. get my own two cents as opposed to everybody putting in theirs who mm -hmm. was not there mm -hmm. so I just decided to do that with her, but yeah. No, the people who follow me are. <laughs> What'd you say? I said you're my favorite. Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> no, the people who follow me are very passionate. They're like, "Why are y'all over this doing all this thing?" And I'm like, "Y'all, listen, this is not my thing. I just put my little minuscule toe in this whole situation, but there is enough room for everybody. For I invite everybody. everybody. Yeah, there's enough room for everybody. It's all conversation. We're all gonna watch it. It's yeah. all great. Calm down. For sure. You know what I think? Because uh, I was just going to say, like, there are millions of girls as well with all kind of different perspectives and views. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I think it would be really interesting if we really brought back girls, but from each season to compete again against each other. Not an all-stars. Not an all-stars where it's like mm -hmm. every just random girl but mm -hmm. against each other. I think that would be cute. Wait, <laughs> are, are you saying like all the girls from the same cycle come from back? From the same compete? cycle compete against each other? Ooh. Yes. Yes. Like, where that wouldn't happen at? though. That wouldn't happen. <laughs> do you think that would happen? That wouldn't happen. I don't know. We could do, it's not like we can't reach out to each other and somebody else do it. It doesn't have to be Tyra. It could be anybody. Oh, wait, not listening. Maybe it could be you. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine me standing before somebody and be like, I have five pictures in my hand and four of y'all bitches back. <laughs> That's hilarious. 
one of y'all bitches is going home today. One of y'all bitches got to go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Kenya, so I thought, what questions can I ask her to try to round it out, try to give a nice closure to our first interview that happened, what, now, like seven months ago? Seven Ten months ago now? Ten years ago. <laughs> yes, a century. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to go forward. So I'm going to open it up with something that has now become a staple, which is a and and Roll Call, where I name every person who is cast on your cycle. You tell me the first thing that comes to your head, good, bad, ugly, or indifferent. And then oh, I have some no. follow-up questions where I think we kind of left off that, okay. that it ends up with your entire cycle four experience. Does that sound good? Yes. Damn it. Okay. This roll call, I'm nervous for it. Okay. All right, let's go. <laughs> the, first na- the first name is Britta. Br- Brita, oh, mm-hmm. sweetest oh, sorry, little Brita. angel, should have been on the show longer, much, much longer. Mm-hmm. Uh, That's all. Uh, uh, beautiful. Mm-hmm. She was the first to go, so I didn't really get much. <laughs> I didn't really get much mm-hmm. out of her, but she was she was so sweet. Um, I have nothing bad to say about her. Love her. I just noticed we are now siblings. How? Look at your hair. Uh, How are you? Uh, welcome. Is that platinum? Is it like a platinum silver? It's something like that. Something like the silver. Welcome. Source. We are siblings, indeed. <laughs> I have a sweet surprise coming at the end of the month, though. So this is no, going to be no more for a little oh. bit. Yes, ma'am. But that's just a Get into it. Get into <laughs> it. The next thing on our list is Sarah. Sarah. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I remember Sarah. Um, feisty and um, a lot of energy, but don't really remember that much. Don't don't okay. remember much. Didn't okay. count. We didn't really. It's not like every girl is like sitting and talking to every single girl. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like I just I mm-hmm. really don't remember much. Okay. What about Brandy? Oh. Brandy. Brandy. Oh, first thing I I've talked is, to Brandy. It, it, you have? How, how was that? Mm-hmm. It was good? I mean, it's, it's only been via text. I've been trying to get her scheduled, but like, you know, she'll text back and I'll probably sleep and, you know, we've just been like going back and forth. <laughs> Brandy was cool as hell. I mm-hmm. feel like poor Brandy. That's the first thing that kind of comes to my head because she kind of got a bad. She's one of those girls who kind of the show just made it really I mean I think she did maybe have a couple of attitude situations in general Mm -hmm. but the show really amped that up like she's just full of just all attitude all the time and she's Mm -hmm. she wasn't at the time so she was she was really cool me her and Tiffany used to be shooting the shit like okay yeah like we were you know we were girls the next name on the list is Noelle no L. Oh, God, you want me to be brutally honest here? Please. She please. was she was a little bit obnoxious. I like Noelle, but she she had the personality of like a 14-year-old. What, what just does that mean? young, just it kind of immature and mm-hmm. like I'm sorry if she sees this. I'm so sorry. That's just my memory. <laughs> I didn't know you were doing this. This is horrible. It's just um, you and I. It's just and you and I. I. No one's watching. Nobody else. Um, no one's watching. And I don't want to lie. I don't like lying. So I'd rather mm-hmm. give my honest opinion. But she, she was nice. She was nice. Mm-hmm. But not my cup of tea in terms of someone that I would want to hang out with in between shoots or anything. Fair enough. The Sorry. next name is Yuvi. Yuvi! Who I spoke to. I spoke to her. Did you? Is she has she done mm-hmm. one with you yet? Yes. Uh huh. She has. I I missed it. Mm-hmm. I love Yuvi. I still talk to her. Ask her about her boys. She's mm-hmm. like you know family woman now, mm-hmm. and she was just so sweet and bubbly on the show. If I ever felt like sad or frustrated, she was just like she. I just mm-hmm. remember her always having like the best advice. Mm-hmm. Incredibly nurturing. Really, really, really sweet. Love Yuvi. Love you. Yeah. Our chat was amazing. I really did enjoy her energy. Yeah. She's very mm-hmm. pleasant. Very pleasant. Very, very. Um, the next thing on the list is the icon 
her sub, Tiffany Richardson. I love Tiffany. Tiffany, mm -hmm. let me tell you something. Tiffany and I laughed on set so hard. We had so many inside jokes. Mm -hmm. And like, um, <laughs> she just really, she really didn't give a fuck. I'll tell you mm -hmm. that much. She really yeah, didn't give yeah. a fuck about a lot of stuff. You know what? I have a little, look at this, what I found. So after the show, Tiffany, I came down to Florida, where I now live in Miami, and um, we did a photo shoot together. And don't laugh, because we both look so young. But are you ready for this? Uh huh. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> no one has ever seen this, because there was no Instagram at the time. But oh, look at wow. this! I look twelve. You look twelve. Tiffany looks badass. Okay. Fierce. Oh wow! No, Fierce. thank you for that. Yeah, I found it. I happened to find it. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Um, but I love Tiffany. Tiffany was really mm. cool. Like, I still gag the fact that I'm in that shot that is now a meme of her being yelled at, and being mm -hmm. like, and I'm clutching my mm -hmm. pearls. I just was just I felt all of it like someone mm -hmm. was yelling at me, mm -hmm. and I just felt I felt so bad because. Tiffany was really saying, like, I don't think she really gave up, but at that point, all of our challenges and stuff were kind of humi kind of uh, humiliating. So Yeah, I could see that. That particular challenge, we had to read off of a teleprompter, mm -hmm. and they put all of these tongue twisters in there. Was and, it really that hard? And it was, it was difficult. And I'm really good at English. I, I was a super nerd in school, like, mm -hmm. really good. And it was still very mm -hmm. challenging for me. So mm -hmm. by that, at that point, she was just like, okay, I'm ready to go because y'all trying to make a fool out of me. I, it really, right, right. I, I don't think she was really just giving up. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. She knew what was at stake and, you know, the value of the opportunity. But mm -hmm. it definitely was, uh, I, she was my girl. She was, she was my girl. Love her. Now, like, there's been so many different versions of what happened that day in panel when her and Tyra had that iconic moment that still echoes in the farthest halls of the internet, what is King and Heels take of what happened that day of when of when we were rooting for you was birth? Um I firstly was like, this is real. Okay. Like this <laughs> is like this is I because I the whole show and our whole mm. lives, we had only seen this brand of Tyra as this sweet motherly, like mother model who's just going to soothe you. So to see her yelling, it was just like, oh wow, yeah, she's she's a, a regular bitch and like wants, to, she got something to say and it's feeling mm -hmm. these feelings and emotions. Mm -hmm. And um, it was, uh, I don't know, I think the show, the, the competition got real serious after that. I don't think we need to be taking everything, take nothing for granted. And really, we were already going hard, but like, mm. we, you know, you could be next, you could be next. And then when I knew it wasn't scripted was when, um, because there's some kind of editing room underneath the kitchen. And after we filmed, because the panel is shot in the house as well. And so there was some kind of editing room that we can't really? see underneath our kitchen. And all night for hours, this, the, the people down there were watching her clip, just having a ball, like over and over and over. Like it was not a scripted thing. Like that really was her feelings, and she just like let her have it. So there's Thanks, been Randy. so many, there's been so <laughs> many different like retellings of what happened. Like I remember reading somewhere where the people say allegedly Tyra Banks told her she can go sleep on some mattress or some floor with her child or something like that. I guess my question is, being there in real time and seeing what was what was shown on TV, was there anything that was left out that we did not get a chance to see? Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember? Can you tell me? But the main thing, I'm, I'm not sure if this part aired, but maybe a piece of this aired. So, like, Tiffany was living with her grandmother at the time, mm. and I really feel, Oliver, like, I am chilling, talking to you, hanging out. You and this yeah. girl <laughs> Getting um, all the things on the scene. <laughs> <laughs> Chilling, okay. Um, um, but I think that yeah, Tiffany was living with her grandmother at the time, mm -hmm. and they were not really doing so well. And 
we all had we had to get a myriad of things before we could go onto the show. We had to get our passports. We what word was that? Myriad, myriad, <laughs> a variety, a plethora, okay, of things. And so, and so, um, you gotta speak this. Uh, she, we had to get passports. We had to get swimsuits, mm -hmm. and of course, like my mom, like I think everyone was trying to go get nice, like expensive things. Right, of and course. The grand, her grandmother went went. Uh, without paying the light bill to get a lot of the things that they needed. And so Tiffany was at the time, I think, living on a, sleeping on a mattress um, on the floor. I'm not sure if she already had her son. I think she did. And they were both like sleeping on the mattress. And so Tiffany, I mean, uh, Tyra's just like, you can go back to living. Like, that's what it was. It was her really putting it in her face you just lost so much and now you're about to go back to a not so good situation and mm -hmm. you know what i mean that's what i think tyra took offense to mm -hmm. of her um not feeling like oh no i have to go back to the poor my, the poor you know lifestyle that i was living and tyra mm -hmm. i wasn't i wasn't appreciative enough of tyra saving me you know what i mean mm -hmm. So like mm -hmm. that's kind of what happened there. So to round this out a little bit, do you think that Tara was in that moment trying to tear her down, was trying to um, operate in any manner of ill will towards her? No, I think she was trying to help her learn a lesson. Like when you are living this kind of way, you cannot, mm -hmm. you cannot make excuses. You need to be resilient. You need to fight for it. You need to. Mm -hmm recognize opportunities that lie ahead and mm -hmm. not uh, mess them up because you because you're so comfortable with being poor mm -hmm. you need to oh. fight for it you know mm -hmm. that's that's my take on gotcha. it because she kind of broke it down like that's why that whole we're all rooting for you it's like you mm -hmm. would have had the biggest transformation you would have had mm -hmm. the biggest the largest success or growth out of everyone. Understood. Yeah. Since you've been back in Miami, have you had the opportunity to reconnect with Miss Tiffany? No, I haven't spoken to her in years. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Um, I don't think she wants to be uh, to reconnect with anybody. I think that mm -hmm. some some people's experience on the show was a little too um, painful. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, because magazines always reach out to us and try to um, do things and they always kind of tell me that they've tried to reach out to her. Um, and if they did reach out, she had nothing but really negative things to say. Um, mm -hmm. So I just think she's trying to just leave all of it in the past. Gotcha. Which should be respected. Yeah, Honestly, I mean, for sure. Respected. I mean, for anybody who had a bad experience on the show, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. I feel incredibly grateful and blessed that um that i did not have i mean i had some bad experiences with my editing right. but my overall experience wasn't traumatic on the mm -hmm. show but i think the most a part of that or most of that was that i was so passionate about the modeling industry i'm like whatever like okay mm -hmm. there's some good there's some bad this is also a tv show so i went mm -hmm. in really realistic but also just very hopeful and being able to push through everything and not see it as this horrible evil thing happening to me like right up for this the next person on our list is rebecca 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 was really sweet is really sweet um i remember being a little bit envious of her when we were on the show because mm. she was the ideal supermodel body she was okay a zero zero like a double zero small just blonde hair blue eyes and just like i'm rebecca and like mm -hmm. and i in my eyes i was like oh okay this bitch is gonna win because she got the whole you know what i mean and like the mm -hmm. whole thing but i remember feeling that same way about britney as well because she has so much personality um at the semifinals, and mm -hmm. and i'm saying the word bitch uh as a term of endearment guys don't attack okay me. right <laughs> leave her alone <laughs> um, um, but I think the, I liked Rebecca though. Didn't connect okay. too much, but I really liked Rebecca. Okay, fair enough. The next person on our list is Tatiana. 
Oh, Tatiana. Um, beautiful girl. I remember she had the most gorgeous eyes I had never seen quite like that since I, her and Rihanna have the most gorgeous eyes I've ever seen in person. Like just all like a strange color, super strange. So you've, you've met just, Rihanna in person. Yeah. A couple of times. Love, love free. Tell us about this. I want to know. I'm uh, about Rihanna? <laughs> yes. Um, I don't remember her perfume. Everyone and their mama is talking about, uh, how she they will never forget this the scent that Rihanna carried. Mm -hmm. Um but she her face was a lot slimmer than I thought it was gonna be and her eyes mm -hmm. were literally like a emerald like the emerald tablets, like some mm -hmm. kind of like crazy green color, like super gorgeous and just chill as shit. Really cool. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Back to Tatiana. Back to back to Tatiana. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. I was just reminiscing in my head a little bit because I had only seen Rihanna one time in New York, mm -hmm. really briefly. And then she walked up to me in a club in LA. Okay. Remember me and was like, so good to see you. And I was just like, what? <laughs> mm -hmm. And it was like a really nice, nice little touch. Um, anyway, Tatiana, I liked her, but I felt like she was really kind of troubled with um really she just wasn't she wasn't very happy when we were on the show i remember her crying a lot really her noel yeah yeah but also she was another girl i didn't really connect with that much she just was mm. not very happy Again, this was 38,000 years ago. So this, I, all I can give you are the little tidbits that are left. That you remember now, mm -hmm. and we appreciate it. What about the Michelle? Michelle. <sighs> the Michelle. Jeez. I spoke to her. You did? I think I saw the flyer. Yes. Oh, I so enjoyed it. I really? So enjoyed what is she yes. doing now? Is she a she... wrestler or something? That's, I heard. No. She used to wrestle, but she is a teacher with, I think, two girls. She has a beautiful husband who's a doctor. She is living life. Like, I can tell she is just happy in everything she's doing right now. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh, good for mm -hmm. her. Mm -hmm. Oh, I felt so sorry for Michelle the whole show. <laughs> I just felt like everybody did her dirty. And I, I, I did my best to not add to it because I used to be bullied in... Uh, mm -hmm the junior high, high school. And um, when, so I'm super sympathetic to anyone who's like being collectively made fun of or is mm -hmm. like the black sheep. And um, cause just her personality was just a little bit different. And right. by the time that uh, bacterial fungus <laughs> came and- Y'all were wrong, so wrong for that. <laughs> So wrong. I didn't create it. I didn't. Uh, who is y'all? <laughs> All um, of y'all in that house. Y'all should have been reading books, like Tiffany Grandma said. Books, please. No. <laughs> or go um, pray or something. But that is uh, that's probably the only time where I was freaking out as well because mm -hmm. everybody's parents, when we were able to call our parents, everyone's parents were making it just fuel to the fire. Mm -hmm. I felt. I just felt really sorry for her, but in overall, like. She was nice, she was bubbly, and I really like her. Okay. What about Christina? Christina. Hmm. She went pretty oh Christina. Christina. Yeah. I'm tripping. I'm thinking about Sarah. Um I love okay. Christina. Me, Brittany, and Christina were like besties, pretty much. Okay. And I, Christina again was like super gorgeous really fun she was like girl next door kind of personality love christina have you spoken to her no 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 well if you need my help with contacting anybody you let me know and i, I appreciate that sis thank you so make much. it happen okay but i, I mm -hmm. loved her i loved her super pretty girl super pretty mm -hmm. Brittany. <laughs> Let me tell you my first impression of Britney when we did semifinals. Mm -hmm. 
taller than everyone, which I was used to being. So I was five, I'm five eleven, and she's six feet, I think. You are tall. And thank you. Um, and so you are she tall. So much personality, making everybody laugh, story after story after story. And I just remember liking her, but feeling mm -hmm. like she's gonna make she's gonna make it to the house. Like mm -hmm. she's like one thousand percent gonna make it to the house. Mm -hmm. And then we finally um, we just connected even more and just laughed because I'm goofy, I'm goofy mm -hmm. as hell. And so we've just really connected through that. And I mean, she was telling ghost stories. We were having, we just had like. <laughs> When you're at semifinals, that's all you can do when you when they have you waiting and you know right right holding. So she just was the life of the party always, and we we've stayed in touch for we still talk, mm -hmm. we still talk. So that's my girl. She was my favorite. Yes, ma'am. When she got eliminated, I was so sad, but then I was also like, okay, I'm still here. <laughs> Why do you think you guys' and friendship took a turn towards the end of the cycle? Okay, Brittany, don't kill me for this, but I th definitely think, first of all, every the temperature overall, like as it as it gets closer and closer to the end, that makes sense. Yeah. The, the edge. Mm. But we went to a dinner. There was a huge misunderstanding, um, and uh, Brittany had a lot to drink, and I I I don't I don't think I was even drinking at the time. Mm -hmm. Maybe I had a maybe a sip or something, but I didn't. Mm -hmm. I I wasn't drinking like that, and so dr drinking was a little bit of a thing. For okay. The time, and so um, that was the reason. That was the reason. When I'm watching it on air, I'm like, because Brittany always has so much personality, you can't. I don't think the masses can tell that she's drunk right now. It just looks like that she's drunk right now. Mm -hmm. Brittany. So that's where that happened. And they edited the, the way they uh, edited and spliced that. There's a scene in the back of some van where it's Brittany turns around and she's yelling for me to shut up. And then shut up! Like, and mm -hmm. like this. That wasn't the same moment. That was not what? the same moment. There's no what way happened they for real? Me what happened in for my real? face yelling, telling me to shut up and I'm going to just do it. What happened for real? No way. Uh, well, they just edited that. We were just going mm. back and forth. I was just telling her gotcha. how, how ridiculous she was being and that she's drunk. Mm -hmm. You're drunk in this mm -hmm. moment. You're drunk as hell. And mm -hmm. you are besides yourself. And you're lucky we were on this TV show. Because it would have went another way. Like, there's only so much you can do. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. all, all in here. All in here. Yeah, that could be a little, a little, <laughs> a lot to handle. <laughs> Yeah, editing is a is a mofo. It's the a next mofo. girl, the next girl on our list is Kaylin. Oh, Kaylin, I love Kaylin. Kaylin is, she was just, uh, she has like her own like quirky personality. Um, um, I don't know what other words I could use really to describe her. We had, we had a blast. Like we just made it throughout the show. She's a little bit more quiet and reserved, mm -hmm. um, but we—I just remember us having like a lot of jokes as well. Like G Kaylin is like on the low, like really goofy. Um, but yeah, we were just like little schoolgirls. It was nice. Cute, cute, cute. And last but not least, Naima. Okay. <laughs> um. So when I was first on the show, I just kept thinking, I'm just going to be brutally honest. Um, I just kept thinking, she is so fake because there was never any enthusiasm for anything. Uh, this is just what, the, what I thought, because this was an exciting thing we were doing. Mm -hmm. um, right. and, it just was, and I just felt like she was putting on a facade because she just was like this Buddhist, like, mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and, and it kind of made me feel like, oh, well, am I just an animal or what? You're just so calm and reserved. And um, I think I just didn't understand. Uh, I didn't understand that, you know, I don't, obviously don't have anything against Buddhist. Um, I've gone to Buddhist meetings with Naima. Um, 
like a, a couple years ago in New York and you know but at the time I just felt like who are you for real you kind of tricked everybody to thinking that you're just like holier than thou and I guess it worked I guess it worked <laughs> This person in the comments. This is hilarious. Where are you guys now? Like, where are you guys now? Um. Well, um. I live in Miami, and she lives in New York. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. I, I, all right. Okay. That's well, it. That that's that. Is that. I want to ask you about the judges panel. Judges panel. Excuse me. What are your thoughts on Nolan Barron? I love Nole. Absolutely love Nole. Um, he offered lots of lots of his advice and stuff on the show was like so fashion oriented, you know, mm -hmm. like it was all like you could tell he just was he's been in fashion mm -hmm. for so long. Mm -hmm. um, and then after the show, he's helped me out with uh, certain situations and we've hung out. I know him and his mom and um, I run oh, events like Nole is like A1. So, what about Nigel Barker? Nigel's fine, but um, I've run into him in a few um, events and things like that when I was living in New York, which mm -hmm. Miami does not have, like these little like fashion soirees. Mm -hmm. It doesn't do no. have that. It's just the beach. Um, but anyway, um, I've run into him there. He's just so fabulous. He's so classy. And so it's his wife, and now he's like doing lots of other things. Um, mm -hmm. Just he's doing a lot, all, like always. Janice Dickinson. Love Janice. Always love Janice. Um, a mm -hmm. lot of people don't know, but like after she would give, like me, for me anyway, any harsh advice on the panel, she would always come up and like kind of soothe you and make you feel better and give you like the real. Oh, advice. wow. At least for me, like, especially towards the end when they kept, like, talking about my weight. Um, she was, like, you know, come and say, like, drink water and try to do this and try to do that. And I don't know how much they expected me to do. And um, mm. I think we had, like, five days at that point, four days. Mm -hmm. um, but she was really cool. She was really cool. I've gone and hang out, hung out with her and her family at her house and oh wow yeah she's like super chill she's crazy she her personality is off the wall she's great what is your favorite janice dickinson memory um whenever i did well on panel <laughs> everything that she would say just about how mm -hmm. i was because it was her doing that that let me know um this comment I'm about to tell you, um, it let me know that what I was doing was right. Because I wanted to mm -hmm. go into the show thinking or feeling uh, like I can take constructive criticism, be able to okay. take constructive criticism. And at one of the early, early pan panels, she was like, you're just soaking it up like SpongeBob SquarePants or whatever. And I was just like, oh, wow, okay, somebody is actually recognizing, because I'm a very mm. sensitive person, I'm a Virgo, I don't know if any Virgos are in the room, but I'm very <laughs> sensitive in certain situations, or certain people talking mm -hmm. to me in certain kind of ways, I can be very sensitive. So, um, yeah, she, she just made me feel as though I was doing a good job at not being sensitive. Okay. That was and loving to me. And last but not least, Tyra Lynn Banks. I'm sorry, who? Tyra. Tyra? I, I don't know that last name. I didn't know what that was. Um, uh, is, isn't her middle name Lynn? I don't know. <laughs> I think her middle name is Lynn. I almost want to say her middle name is Lynn. I think I'm right. Tyra Lynn Banks. Somebody Google it. Somebody find out for us. Somebody please let me know if I'm right. Um, uh, I love Tyra. Tyra has changed my life. She changed the whole course of my life. She's helped me see all of my dreams. You know, she changed the whole course. You know what I mean? Like I was, I had mm -hmm. a full scholarship um, to UC Riverside, majoring in college, uh, majoring in college, majoring in biology <laughs> to be a doctor. Mm -hmm. And oh wow, changed the whole thing. 
and I always right. was always really really passionate about fashion and modeling and so you know right after college is right when I moved to New York because I figured I need to be there fashion capital of the world mm -hmm. and so she didn't necessarily help me with anything after that but she gave me the most amazing opportunity for me to do something with so I'm just like eternally grateful for that shout out to Tyra Bain. <laughs> What are your thoughts on the production and the post-production, editing all that stuff around cycle four of Top Model? Um, well, our season was not edited. I'm sorry. It was not scripted. So okay. I think that just realistically speaking, they're going to have to edit some stuff, I guess, mm -hmm. to make it seem spicy. Um, However, when you're editing things that can really damage a person, mm -hmm. um, I feel like they should maybe be a little bit more considerate and handle that with a little bit more care. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because some girls are really damaged by how they're seen. Some people, like I saw in one of your comments um, on your page under our flyer, someone said, you know, the show really portrayed you as really selfish. Mm -hmm. And, you know, how does that make you feel now? And it's just like, well, I didn't know that. And so it's like, just, it's just so funny that your whole, like how people see you and view you, you know, it can be, it can be damaging. And it's mm -hmm. been 16 years. And so people still are holding on to 19 year old version of me. Mm -hmm. And um, that's something that they should handle with a little bit more care. What are some things you saw once the show came out that you felt was damaging? Or, hey, y'all didn't really portray this the right way it happened. So one of them was the fight with Brittany. Um, another one, this one is just ridiculous because I still have stupid girls coming into my comments thinking they're sticking up for Naima, okay, um, for a situation that never was not, did not happen for how they saw it. Um, so it was when, when we went to the Nelson Mandela jail. Yeah. So just to explain it one more time, okay, there was this uh, tour person for the prison, for the entire prison, and it was like mm -hmm. a long tour. And so they're going through all the trials and tribulations and, and it's sad. It, mm -hmm. Nelson's story, when you're hearing it, and I think the guy was like, used to work with him or something, and it's like really personal, and it was mm -hmm. so incredibly sad. And so, um, <laughs> by the time we got to his cell, they asked, okay, now, <laughs> I have to laugh at this now, but I'm just being like completely honest. So there were a couple things. When it came to Brittany and I, before we were walking up into the actual hall where the cell was, mm -hmm. I asked, I really did ask this question. I said to Brittany, I said, is Nelson Mandela still alive? Mm -hmm. And she was like, you know, she answered and then she just really made it, made me feel like, how could you not know? And da da da, da. And, you know, I didn't know that he was still alive. And then... I had to be honest and I answered these questions in in the uh in the producer interviews but they never aired it but like in the school it says a lot about the school system because and mm -hmm. because first of all I thought Africa was going to be like just animals and you know dirt like I'm exaggerating but I didn't think it was going to be as civilized as it was and then, um, you know, when it when when I did learn about Nelson Mandela, they had like one picture. He was mm -hmm. hella old in the picture. Uh huh. I never really heard, and I went to a pretty good school. Never heard about Nelson Mandela again. Mm hmm. So I felt like it wasn't this that we don't talk about him in our news. We don't give updates. He's in another continent. It's not like I really we're getting schooled and updated on Nelson. So I just, mm -hmm. I thought it was completely natural. Like, is he still alive? Mm -hmm. And, um, and so they really blew that out of the water. And so a lot of people, you know, really tried to make me 
seem like I'm uneducated and I don't care and how could I not know? Um, and then by the time we got into the jail cell, the guy with this story, <laughs> the story, Nelson's story was like just so detailed and um, depressing that, you know, they asked who they wanted to open the key, like who wanted the key. to hold the key and open the actual cell. Right. And so they gave it to Naima. And I really crossed my heart, hope to die. I really okay. care less about that. I was like, by the time we got actually in this tiny, tiny cell and was looking out mm -hmm. the window that I had learned about on school, of like how long he was in that prison. And a very I long started time. crying. I started right. crying. It was just so sad. And then they edited that to make it look like I'm crying because I didn't get the key. <laughs> and it, to watch that play back is, <laughs> to your whole family and everything right. felt like incredibly petty and um, ridiculous. And so, um, Yikes! yeah, and, the, and then the last thing was, of course, when we had to, um, when they were, you know, making their story that I had gained so much weight, which I had probably mm -hmm. gained like three or four pounds. Um, but they really edited everything. They are, uh, there was one scene where we were all getting in a van and we're all eating crew food. It's not like they're feeding us model food so that we can keep our figures. Um, so it's all bagels and just like unhealthy stuff. And I grabbed one bagel and they edited me. Now, it takes a while to eat a bagel. You're eating the bagel, walking to the van, eating in the van. Um, and then like if you're having a conversation later on in the van, you're still eating the bagel. Same bagel. They mm -hmm. really made it look like I ate. You were just chopping. Bagels. Three bagels. And it, it just, mm -hmm. I, it's just like, God damn, they're really making me feel like this obese person. Mm -hmm. And just their the entire editing um, process. And so even there was a scene where in Africa I was eating some yogurt. Uh -huh. And I'm trying to I'm trying to take the advice and eat just one bowl of yogurt before a whole photo shoot. But I was still hungry, so I wanted to get up and have another bowl. But they made it seem like You were just pigging out. He's had a massive breakfast and now mm -hmm. she's going back for seconds. Like, no, I'm just not full on a bowl of yogurt. So that's 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 that. Those are the things that I was poorly portrayed. <laughs> are you like still upset about that type of stuff? Um, kind of when it comes to the weight situation, because I uh -huh. think that you know now I, in hindsight, looking back, I was always comparing myself to other models, uh -huh. um, other like high fashion models. Mm -hmm. And um, I was going like just doing lots of extremes, drinking all kind mm -hmm. of crazy energy drinks to mm -hmm. do more cardio, and you know what I mean, like just trying to be skinny and to and for everyone on TV, because this is like when I was still like nineteen, twenty years old, and so for ev everyone to have seen the show, I also don't want to be seen as fat girl from the show, you know what I mean, or the girl who just can't stop eating, so. Um, that kind of affected me then, but I. How did you? No, I was gonna <laughs> ask, and I think you're about to answer. I was gonna ask you, how did you move past that? Because um, I don't get any of that energy from you. Well, I think the good thing that could come out of it is that I've developed like an insane gym like relationship in a good way. Like I, I love working out now. Like mm -hmm. I know, I notice how much better like I feel like. Mm -hmm. Aside from like eating cleaner meals as opposed to like mm -hmm. eating burgers, I can really feel the difference inside my body, and mm -hmm. um, and I know like taking account, taking not responsibility, but like just understanding my body. So mm -hmm. my body type, if I know I gain weight in certain areas, just I need to learn myself and figure mm -hmm. out how to go to the gym and battle that. Cause I can't do anything about certain areas that I may gain fat. Right. You know I mean. So, or my metabolism and how that works. So I need to work with my body so it looks how I want it to look. And so I'm in the gym all the time. <laughs> I mean, every time I see you on your social media, every time I post you on mine, everyone's like, oh my God. And even looking at the comments right now, she's so gorgeous. She's so beat. She is so sad. So, I mean, I think it's safe to say mission accomplished. What Thank you, you. Thanks, babes. Oh, that's, that's really nice. Can you hear me?
I can't. It's kind of delayed now. What did you hit? You hit something. I was going to try to screen record this, but. Oh, Kenya, I can send it to you after we're done. See, Oliver, so I love you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I got caught. You're so welcome. <laughs> you are so welcome. I'm like, girl, you messing up the thing. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to get into some fan questions. A lot of um, fans have some questions for you. Are you ready? Yes. Firstly, I just want to say every once in a while, I've been like glancing down to comments. You guys have been so freaking nice. Thank you oh, yes. so, so much. Yeah. Like, mm. I really, really appreciate it I, a lot. Thank you. Mwah. Okay. Let's they have been so nice. I've been glancing down. So I'm like, they are really, they are on their best behavior today. Really nice and sweet. Makes me feel all fluffy. I like it. Okay, let's go. Okay, here we go. So this is Aaron Sketch asking, Kenya is stunning. My question is, what was your favorite photo shoot from your cycle, and what is your least favorite? Well, I have another surprise for you. Oh, surprise! I, w <laughs> I wish I could pull, like, Nole or somebody out of the, out of, like, <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> no, pull, like Tiffany, pull Tiffany um, out of your bag. Everyone, no, the internet the would break. One of the producers sent me my portfolio from the show, so I'll be able to show you the exact pictures or tell you anything the you want about physical, any photo shoot. Yeah. The actual, the actual portfolio. The actual portfolio. So this is one of my first photo shoots because, or my favorite photo shoots. Uh huh. It is. Yeah. Let me take it out of this plastic. Mm -hmm. It is the first photo shoot where we had to be aliens. Mm hmm. So this was my favorite because it was our first shoot and um, that's when it became real for me. Like, mm -hmm. wow, I am really on this mother show. Wow. Mm -hmm. and, um, seeing Nigel and like everybody that I had been watching for the first two seasons mm -hmm. because season three was airing. Like, I wasn't able to watch season three because we were filming our thing. But gotcha. um, it just was like, it just felt like it was surreal. It was like, and I looked really good, and then I got a really good photo, and I was just mm -hmm. like, yay, I'm not eliminated on the first round. And then this is my least favorite. Oh, actually, this is another favorite. Can I have two favorites? Yes, you got whatever you want. Whatever you want. This one because it was the first click of the camera. Yes, ma'am. You better work. You got you first call out that week, didn't you? I'm sorry? You got first call out that week, didn't you? Did you didn't your name get called first that week? No. Um, I don't I don't remember. I don't remember. But I remember that that was the first click of the camera. Mm -hmm. That's all that mattered to me really, because Tyra made a really big deal out of it. <laughs> work. So this this <laughs> this was my least favorite shoot, okay? <laughs> Okay. I want to know in the comments what you guys think of this one. They had oh. fake rain, fake rain coming down. We had to like pump gas, throw tires around, and do all kind of weirdness. Um, we couldn't hear any direction because of the rain machine thing was so loud. Mm, it was, so it was loud, hot. Yeah. My outfit wasn't that cute. We were like trucker. Um, look at my facial expressions right now. Um, but yeah, that was my that was my least favorite shoot. My least favorite one of you. I oh, oh go ahead go ahead. I'm sorry. No 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 no. You want to say something related to that shoot? No, I was gonna say my least favorite one of you is the um, seven deadly sins. That's what I was going to right now. <laughs> That's exactly, but it was more so for yeah, the reason that they one. were giving it to me. I felt like mm -hmm. gluttony, really. Yeah. And I was kind of mad at myself because I felt like I was not as creative in that box as I could have been. I mean, mm -hmm. now that I've been modeling forever, I was like, oh, like right. I know that I would, I could have like really smash that but i didn't know i had this apple and donut i just felt like they were trying it so. <laughs> god damn it so yeah that's that is okay. there, is there something else that i didn't answer or did i get it no i have way more fan questions for you, you know you answer that one to the t you ready yes 
Okay, Ashley Morgan, think is asking, what was the biggest lesson you took away from Top Model, whether it was a life skill or something related to modeling? Oh, that's a great question. Thanks for asking, darling. Um, I really feel like I learned resilience. Mm -hmm. And um, just how to, learning how to like push through and like even though you don't know what's going to happen, just still like try your best, do your best. And, um, and my competitiveness came out like crazy. Like I'm not, <laughs> I don't want people to think that I'm just walking around like it's all about me and I gotta win. Mm -hmm. But um, having a little competitive edge is healthy um, in mm -hmm. terms of maybe competing with yourself to be better than what you were before or your competitors if you have your own business or whatever it is, you know what I mean? Like just striving for the best. Um, and yeah, somebody in the comments said, I hate that they did like so, so many um, over the top photo shoots. And yeah, after, after the show was done, cause like all of the photo shoots are just like crazy theme, crazy makeup, crazy retouching. Of course, like, yeah. Doing everything. I could not use this portfolio after, I thought I was gonna walk into the agency. Really? Like, no, nope, I had to shoot my portfolio myself. And like connect with you have to do all new photo shoots, redo everything because this is no other models' portfolios look like this. This looks like a cartoon. Yeah. No photo out of that portfolio book could you use? Nope, <laughs> not Dang a single man. one. Not even a cover girl photo. No, <laughs> let me show you my cover girl photo. <laughs> It's so retouched. You guys are used to looking at it on TV where it's like, wow, look at that photo. She looks like a mom. No. They shaved my teeth down. They shaved my teeth down. My skin is uh -huh. way over blurred. My brows were horrendous. Look at this hairline. Get into this hairline. Oh, wow. <laughs> so you think about now, had this been, had it said CoverGirl on it, then maybe mm -hmm. that would have been like, okay, that's an, it's, it's from an advertisement. But your book is just full of stuff where it's just blurred. They facetuned the hell out of me. <laughs> so, no, you can't use it. And not even the dog one? <laughs> no. Oh, damn. Okay. No. Which is um, why, which is why I just want to say any aspiring uh -huh. models stick around children. for when um, Oliver asks me about what I'm doing now, because, you know, everything that I've gone through has uh, led to um, what I'm doing for aspiring models now. So if you're, if you're, you want to get into modeling or if you want to learn uh -huh. posing, get confidence in yourself or any of those things, just stick around, stick around. Okay. Stick around. So Eli Nine KF wants to, is saying, "I just rewatched the cycle. My question is, do you think they purposefully they purposefully did the seven deadly sins in the graveyard because the production knew about Kaylin's situation?" Then, side note, my favorite scene <laughs> is you being distracted by Kaylin's chocolate muffin. Stay beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> hey, put that "stay beautiful" for that shade that he threw in there. Right. Right. <laughs> That was a nice touch. Um, I do not think that they intentionally did that. They would, I don't think they would have had enough time just for what to single out one girl who would have been triggered. You know what I mean? Okay. And then um, Mr. J did a, um, he did an interview that I watched as well. And he said that, you know, those things are kind of all planned out like well in advance. Um, mm. But there is a chance that maybe they did know because my last three photo shoots were all like related to fatness. Mm -hmm. Gluttony, I was the elephant in mm -hmm. Africa out of all the damn animals. Y'all gave me the to elephant, be. but I slayed it. And then uh, there was another one that was kind of, yeah. The waterfall uh, one? The, a the, the Africa photo one. shoot, I remember them specifically coming in and saying, roll her shirt up so that you can see her stomach. Like intentionally, yeah. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, um, no. we're all better now. 
Alm likes cake, I think this is what, oh, Alm likes cake. They're saying, we're the girls, your castmates, helpful while you were navigating being size shame, size shamed, excuse me, inappropriately touched by the male model and essentially called dramatic over the Nelson Mandela cell visit. Did the girls support you or make your situation tougher? Um, I do not think they helped with anything, with any of those mm -hmm. situations, especially like the size shaming. I like that. I like the sound of that size shaming. Um, and then I think that they definitely made it worse because I was making a, a huge, when I found out we were going to Africa and I was like the only girl of color from what I knew, like I knew that Naima was maybe mixed. And like, please don't, nobody attack me for this. But like, in my 19 year old mind, I saw Naima and I didn't see, I thought that I was like the only girl of color, 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 you know what I mean? Just in my mind mm -hmm. at the time, who made it to Africa. And so I just kept, I just kept saying, you know, how excited I was like, you know, I can't believe I'm on this soil. Like I never thought that I'd be able to come to my own home, homeland, you know? Um, Right. at this age so I just made a big deal about Africa and so when the Nelson Mandela thing went went down it was kind of like you don't know that he's still alive you know what I mean it's just kind of it's uh it was just a double-edged sword with that but of course especially by, like, by the time we got to that point everybody was so competitive with each other that we didn't care mm -hmm. about each other <laughs> Tell me what do you care to share about the whole dancing photo shoot with Bertini and that entire situation? Because we talked about it before a little bit. We did. I want to say this, and this is like really serious. And um, I just naturally, just to update everybody. Oh, let me show you the picture. Okay, the evidence. <laughs> Um, this, just to update everybody, this was a photo shoot that we did in Africa where we had to, mm -hmm. um, you know, we were teamed up with three male models and, um, they were to dance with us on set for this photo, right? Mm -hmm. This one. Okay. And, right. um, we had to dance with them and before the whole photo shoot went down, Bertini, um, one of the models was like hitting on me heavy. I mean, extremely heavy. Like, I'm going to come to America and find you. Give me your phone number. Can I take your, like, can you take mine? Um, just overly complimenting me. And I remember shutting it down because at that point, it's like five of us left. I'm like trying to do my thing. And so, um, Excuse me. So uh, we get on set and these guys all have on little, little loincloths, okay, over their situations. And Bertini comes in. The other two guys were like keeping a nice distance and Bertini is to my left and is like grunting and moaning on me. Like, mm -hmm. And immediately I felt really uncomfortable because I'm very professional, I think, in these situations. I, had I felt like he was just, he was just like trying to do really well or something that I wouldn't have felt anything. But I felt like I was being, you know, sexually assaulted in front of everybody and no one could tell. And then, you know, I saw that he, um, what's the appropriate word for... He was erect. Is that is that a good word? Let's go with that one. <laughs> and so, <laughs> <laughs> so um, that also, you know, I I just it made me feel just so disgusting for something like that to happen when no one's around is like really gross. But for it to happen with everybody watching, and you know the intent of this person, it's like a whole nother level of like eerie and disgusting. And so I did what I thought Tyra would do. I literally was like, what would Tyra do? We've been having challenges about having your own business and like being strong and, and being smart and all of this stuff. So I thought, oh, she would be proud of me for stopping the shoot and saying something inappropriate is going on. And mm -hmm. um, I stopped the shoot and um, 
they just kind of made me feel as though I'm being a drama queen and stopping the shoot for nothing. Um, and then continued on with the shoot. They don't, you know, I think I got reprimanded again at panel. Really? It never, like, there was, I don't remember. Maybe someone came and said something to me, but I don't remember. That would have been significant. Um, mm -hmm. But I I think it would have been, it would have been very, um, more, a little bit more soothing and comforting for someone to believe me. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So what's crazy is in the photo, he's even grabbing my butt. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, yeah, we can see that. Did he do that on any other girl's photos? No. And I and I got eliminated for this photo shoot because no, not they that had one. to retouch. They had to retouch my stomach to be so flat. And I guess I was not moving as much as and I really <laughs> think that is because of the situation. Like you think mm -hmm. a guy is doing this, you're not you're not gonna be able to focus and just like flourish like some of the other mm -hmm. girls did. But um, I, what I do want to say is to any woman, like regardless of what you think the, circum the, the consequence is going to be, like for any situation that you're going through, like whether it's on set or at home, is to find someone that you know you can trust, that you are, are comfortable with, and can tell them. Like you have to speak up and, you know, stand up for yourself. And especially if it's like situations that are going on at home, they're not going to stop until you make them. You know what I right. mean? So it's like really, really important to speak up for yourself. Have that much love and respect for yourself, no matter how hard it may be, because these situations can at times be very difficult to speak out on. So um, I commend you on anyone who ha you know who, anyone who has the courage to really like speak up it's important um before i ask my next question just for you antm history enthusiasts out there keen you said you got eliminated on this shoot you actually got eliminated on the next shoot which was the cover girl shoot Did I? Brittany went home First yep of all, you, you, don't you, check you. me okay <laughs> <laughs> it felt like it was out yeah, okay it felt like it was no. out. Which one did no, I get? I, mean, I get it. The, the cover girl. You made it all the way to the top three. The coveted top three. Okay. All right. Brittany, 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 My Brittany went home on that one. story is still valid, okay? Oh, the story is still valid. The story is still valid. <laughs> Which I'm going to ask you, in that moment, what would you have liked to see happen? in that Brittany? situation as a result of yes as a result of you oh my gosh that, that they say we're sorry that you feel uncomfortable we can remove that model and continue on with your shoe mm -hmm. and then they ask the other models if they're comfortable with him being used for their shoe you know what i mean and mm -hmm. then to have um not rewarded me but to at least comfort me and make mm -hmm. me you know apologize for that happening because it's not their fault but some kind of decency um you know of the situation some type of action i'm 18 years old i'm 18 right. 19 years old you know but young girl he was a much older mm -hmm. yeah um here we go this yeah, is Brittany jo joshi 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 okay. excuse me joshi? four four five Joshi, I don't know King of shit. They're asking, did you get asked for All Stars? All and if so, why didn't you do it? And if you didn't, would you have done it? Um, I did not get asked for All Stars. Really? And I was tight about it because I felt like you were upset. Well, because we had they we did a tour that was not televised. They picked 12 of the favorite girls of all this, the whole show. And they did mm -hmm. six girls. Like, so me, Eva, and like, I don't even remember the other girls. We all did the, south, the southern states from New York to California. And then six girls, mm -hmm. one of them was including Takara, went from, I think Mercedes was on there too, went from New York to like the, north or, the northern uh, part of the country over to LA, from New York to LA. Mm -hmm. 
And so I just knew, I was like, okay, well, if you're already considering me like a favorite, then I would do All Stars. But then after I saw All Stars, I was not feeling like I should have done it. Because, mm -hmm. first of all, I'm happy with my position of where I'm at on the um, ANTM throne. <laughs> and I feel like they that is their time to really get a little reckless. When they cut Bree's hair, I was like, are you serious? Because her hair was like her moneymaker. And they're just mm -hmm. a whole new makeover. Like, yeah, we're going to just fuck shit up. Try it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, ha I'm really happy with, with where I am. But, I mean, I, I really am, like, interested if there's something that would happen um, with doing something, like, again now. So, yeah. I really do believe no one has told me anything. I just want to say, everybody, to you, everyone watching, no one has told Oliver anything. But <laughs> I firmly believe that there, because there's only been 24 cycles, I do firmly believe there's going to be a 25th something to close it all out. Something? And with that, there's going to be something. Some, some, there's going to be some type of final season to close it all out. Or there's going to be a sickening reboot. Sickening. Sickening. Sickening! It That's needs to be it. more realistic, I think, if they do. Who, who would host if, it? Ooh. No, they'd like, realistically, have, who would host the America's like, Next Top Model reboot? I mean, they'd probably have uh, Jordan Dunn or one of these Instagram model things that... One of the Kardashians? <sighs> Kendall, maybe? Yeah, mm -hmm. that makes sense. That makes sense. Well, that, makes, mm -hmm. that makes complete sense. Yeah. <laughs> it does. Actually, I like Kendall, actually. I think she's stunning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, guys, I cannot host. Oliver, no. <laughs> I, I play my position. I cannot host. Now, I will be tight. Now, I, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. I will be tight if I didn't either get asked to be then I'm gonna ask him to be a judge because I don't think I'm up there just yet to be a judge and tell people. But you I could be a be nice like reoccurring. You could be like yes. a grandmother. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That'd be good. Yeah. That'd, That'd be a nice sprinkle. <laughs> Wake up in here! We got a photo shoot to go to. Wake up! Wake it up! <laughs> okay. Um, zombie space orphan lovely name is asking how was the ghosty experience for you they made it seem like you were cutting off the other girls to get to the designers is there anything we did not see let me tell you something about that uh <laughs> that ghosty challenge tell me at uh -huh. that point my comp competitive spirit had reached an all-time high okay and i mm. was not a going to allow especially because i won every challenge that had to do with social encounters and you know representing yourself or whatever and so um i figured and we got our own taxi car cabs in africa this is like our first mm -hmm. time, time alone and it, mm -hmm. i i mean something in me really was like that, that kill them all kill, <laughs> kill them all <laughs> and so i went into all of them oh, and, and but i was nice it was fun though it's like exciting mm -hmm. it's not like this i think you can be competitive and be like evil i wasn't that way at all because like the scene where me and kaylin had reached a uh one of the casting places together and we're fighting at the door i was laughing mm -hmm. the whole time like it's so it was so fun it was so much fun mm -hmm. Um, but then, you know, as soon as you get in there, you're smiling, charming, and, like, uh -huh, uh -huh. I think I was the t I was tallest at that point, and walk was sickening, so it was just, like, I was just, I felt comfortable going in front of complete strangers at that point, and just, like, this is what I have. But it was all healthy and, like, super fun. Like, it's making me, like, smile now how much fun it was. Yes, ma'am. You better work, can yeah. you? <laughs> um, a lot of people have a lot of questions about your hair journey on America's Next Top Model. You came in with you came in with, with one hairstyle. You got your makeover, and then throughout Left the cycle, with a whole you see swap. Yes, tell us about this whole transformation you kept going through with your hair on the show. 
Well, it was so funny because, I mean, I was always, before when I was watching the show, I was like, okay, when we do the makeover episode, I cannot uh, freak out during the makeover. Like, it, because that's, they edit those girls so bad. Like, I'm like, I have to go. That's what you thought. And just take it. Whatever they give me, I'm ready for whatever. And so what I was not ready for was they, I was supposed to go Auburn with, I had just my natural hair, just like regular, like, um, natural hair not being shoulder length but kind of boring um and they, they were supposed to give me a bob but an auburn colored bob that was like tyrus color mm -hmm. which i was pumped for like color yes so they put in this like italian hair oh with the bob leave out situation so they left my hair out in the back so i could do ponytails or whatnot and what did make me upset i don't know if anybody remembers this but they could not dye the hair like it, they did the strand test and it didn't match so i had to stick with the black hair but i was like whatever it's nice hair and then my leave out that they, that i had they cut it super short in the back and my hair was like kind of long so now just this back bottom inch of my hair is about an inch long and i was so mad about that i just felt like couldn't you guys have braided it up or you know something and then pulled it out if you're putting it in a ponytail so that made me upset, but they didn't make too big of a fuss, which I was glad about because I essentially did like the, the look. But then by the time we got to Africa, out of nowhere, I guess maybe Tyra wanted to up the stakes a little bit and make me feel more comfortable. But she was like, we're going to give you a new weave. We're going to give you a floor, le floor length, um, back, like down your back. <laughs> Kenny, if you would have walked in with some floor, with a floor length wig. <laughs> <laughs> and so I they uh they gave me this long way. She was like, I think this is gonna really help your confidence and like, you know, mm -hmm. blah blah blah. And I was with it. I was like, All right, bitch, throw it in, let's do it. And <laughs> um and it did. It really did. I hadn't mm -hmm. had long hair like that before. And so that was the start of my, my weave journey. But then they just like when they aired it, they just kind of showed they sh they for two seconds, they were like, we thought that this was going to give her more confidence. So we gave her, you know, a longer mm -hmm. hair extension. But that was it. That is that is what happened. They literally came in and in the middle of nowhere and asked to change it. Which hairstyle do you prefer, the short or the long? Long, long. I feel like with my face, my features, I either look good with mm -hmm. like short hair like this, where it's just face or like incredibly long giving you Naomi. The ooh ah ah. Not like in between. I mean, it would have looked good, mm -hmm. but they didn't have, they didn't have, they had, they should have had some girls from the hood come and do the hair. Cause the, the people at the salon <laughs> were French and just no offense to French people. You know, you have to say sorry for everything. They just didn't know. They didn't know but the things of the thing. You know how to really give it to you in terms of weaves, so. Mm -hmm. That's that. Second to last question is from a Riviera five one one. I hope I said that right. They want to know. I want to hear more about your post top model career. Oh, how sweet! Um, it's been really, really nice. So just immediately right after the show, I moved to New York and um, decided to, you know, try to sign with agencies. So I signed with Elite, and then. Um, it was a little bit hard, uh, some of the, the gigs and stuff, because I'm 5'11", and I wanted to do high fashion, like New York Fashion Week and stuff, um, right off the bat for the really big designers. But you have to be like a size, like I said, a double zero, just like zero yeah. body fat for it to do mm -hmm. a lot of, especially at the time. Like now, girls can be a little like healthier looking. But um, mm -hmm. it's been amazing. I have walked in every fashion week you know around the world so paris milan london new york of course la congrats um, swim week hawaii fashion week mm. um been featured in vogue cosmopolitan marie claire oh dope w us weekly people um and i've done campaigns for heineken samsung uh budweiser to, and like a, a few other ones like I've been Rolling Stone. I've done a lot of stuff. It's been 16 years. She's a working girl. Uh -huh. And so, um, but I really do want to tell you about what I'm really up to right now. 
So yes, tell if, us if you are a model, listen in. Okay. So, um, I have developed, um, my own business called find your light. If you have heard me speak throughout this entire live, um, I, it took a lot for me to really get signed. I could, like I said before, I couldn't use my book from portfolio, uh, <laughs> my portfolio from America's next top model because they were so over top. And I had to really create myself and learn the industry, learn what my market uh, was and how to build my portfolio for my market. And so my business find your light helps every single aspiring model get started in modeling. So it's a, um, post coaching course, which is amazing, 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 and so much fun. So I teach you all of the agency logistics, how to find an agency, how to submit to the agencies, what you need for your portfolio, specifically for your market, um, your comp cards, your digitals, percentages agents are supposed to pay you. I help you with mastering your facial expressions. I help you with posing from literally head to toe. So I'm breaking down the head, neck, shoulders, arms, hands, hips, legs, toes, okay? Yes, ma'am. Really teaching you how to flow in front of the camera and move gracefully and master every single shot. Um, and then I help you boost your confidence, help you with your social media. Um, and then after you take my course, I become your model mentor. So I'm there for you anytime you have questions about photographers and if they're good or contracts. I'm reading over my student contracts all the time with modeling agencies. Um, and then I produce photo shoots as well. So if you're in the Miami area or you're planning on coming for a little vacay, um, you can come down and I would produce an entire photo shoot for you based on what you need in your portfolio. And uh, you get a whole bunch of really nice retouched images. A lot of my students are getting signed to modeling agencies um, because a lot of people just don't know, don't know what to do in front of the camera. And then even if they do, they don't know what to do with those pictures and how to properly submit. So if you're mm -hmm. interested in Find Your Light, okay, DM me. That's it. I'm going to have a really big website launch coming up soon. Um, and so right now is a really good time to try to get in if you are interested. That's it. Are there any requirements or expectations it of what you're looking for in terms of a student? Male, well, female, this size, this tall. Thank you. Great question. Um, my class is actually open to everyone because I do courses for not just aspiring models, but bloggers, fashion enthusiasts, moms who want to feel a little bit more confident um, or just complete beginners. I do it for males. I do it for females. Excuse me. Um, and then we do the class via FaceTime. So you don't have to be here in order to do it. Um, and the class is super duper fun. I have you playing music in the background. We're doing all of these exercises together. I send you a booklet um, that you have to keep forever so that you, you know, can remember you get homework. It's, it's a really, really great class. I'm so proud of my students. Like they are all flourishing now and like have so much mm -hmm. confidence in themselves. And so even if you just need a confidence boost and just want to know how to just slay, then you can yes, do that. <laughs> do it again. Let me see. Do it again. <laughs> what did you want to see? Give a little bit of that. <laughs> yes. Yes, ma'am. The face. The face. <laughs> but thank you for letting me share that because oh, there aren't too many people who do what I do. You know, um, oh, there are so many schools like John Casablanca and um, uh, what's the other one? Um, Barbizon and they're kind of sorry to say it scam artists you know they charge you thousands of dollars and they um, I'm sorry to use that word but they just don't provide you with what they promise you you know what I mean and these are people who are I don't think I don't know if they are actually have modeling experience either as an agent or as a model you know so you're able to get from me like real like experience from someone who's been in the industry for 16 years mm. so i'm really I'm really pumped about it does anybody maybe have any questions about it you can ask me yes guys any questions about kenya's new business venture while you guys are populating those questions down in the chat kenya is there anything you would like to add to our discussion about you in america's next top model 
Um, not really. Not really. I'm, 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 I am, can I say this? Can I toot my own horn? I'm really proud of my yeah, own toot, growth toot it, toot it, toot it. and for sticking to it because I really am just so passionate about modeling. Like it's such a beautiful mm -hmm. form of self-expression without saying anything, you know? Um, and it's some, it's, I could have easily given up like a long time, a long time ago, but just decided mm -hmm. to push through and now I'm able to like share all this stuff with with other people but the show was crazy it was very trying it was very trying if they do come back and do anything I I don't know I would I think anybody should be weary of doing a reality show in general you never know oh yeah you might be on the good side but you you might come out feeling betrayed you know or like not portrayed mm -hmm. in the right way you might feel like your character is being attacked Mm -hmm. so. If you were standing before Tyra Banks right now, what would you say, Kenya? Oh my goodness. I would say, Tyra, Tyra, thank you so, 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 so much for the opportunity that you granted me. I've learned so much on your show, I've learned so much about myself and so much about the modeling industry. Um, and, uh, I am just eternally grateful for that. Thank you. A lot of questions. Um, I don't know if you want to answer right now, but a lot of questions about how much does your class cost and does height, does height affect them being a student? I know you already answered so, answer this already. Yeah, and of course, so, they're asking, how do you sign up? Yeah. So um, I'm not going to disclose the cost right now because there's like different setups, like different, different packages that I have. But all you do is DM me saying you're interested in Find Your Light, and then you get a, a, a free phone consultation. In that consultation, I figure out what it is that you would like to get out of the course, and then I, tell, I break every single thing down to you. Um, I have testimonials and all of that kind of stuff, like if anyone is interested. Um, just DM me, though. Just DM me and mention Find Your Light, and um, it's, really, it's a really easy thing to to do um you'll be in really good hands <laughs> what is this face with that, what is it no i'm just letting you talk your stuff girl you know i'm listen <laughs> this is y'all time to talk i just like to move out of the way no the way. this is so awesome it's so fun interviewing with you i literally feel like i'm hanging out with you there's anyone else here oh that means so much to me thank you so much thank you thank you thank you i had again i had so much fun with you down in florida when i came this last time like it was Can so you much fun back? you were so down or you were you were so down to earth like you were now i'm not gonna lie you, when you <laughs> when you walked through the door i was like yes ma'am give me all the things give me <laughs> all, all the things but no you were so down to you were so calm. You were so down to earth. You were so cool. I had a great time with you. Thanks, babe. Well, you are totally welcome to come down to Miami. Okay, come to, come. You haven't been to my house. Want you to come and you know chill no. and go have a beach day? Yeah, we're yeah. gonna make a whole thing out yeah. of it. Okay, all right. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> well, everyone, send Kenya kisses, hugs, all the things of the things as we say goodbye to her from giving us. Finally, the closing that you all wanted <laughs> of our Antium Live on Cycle 4. Kenya, I love you so much in real love life. Love you so much. Thank you. Bye, pretty. Yes. Bye. Come, 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 come